Good day fellow investors, in a recent video when we discussed how to calculate the intrinsic value and I also shared a downloadable template and that will also be in the link here in the description below updated and with the stocks that we'll discuss today there were so many questions about okay Sven great formula template but how do we know the growth rate how do we put earnings cash flows or something else into it how do we estimate the terminal value and that I said to all I will make another video so in this video we'll go through four stocks Unilever, Kroger, Nestle, Tesla we'll see what are the input figures that have to be set in into this template and then you'll see how you figure out what is really adding value to you as a shareholder which is key for investing returns. Before we start I just wanted to wish you happy holidays, Merry Christmas, I hope you are with your loved ones. We in Europe are in severe lockdown so this Christmas will be what it will be. Fortunately we have communication methods but I wish you all the best. And I want to thank you so much because by liking, subscribing or sharing these videos that I make you are really really doing a great thing. If you go to my page and you click on charity you can see that by now we donated 51,611 euros thanks to this YouTube channel. As we said we'll donate all the money we make on YouTube so up till now we have made 59,000 $895.17, about 50 something thousand euros that we have donated. And thanks to you watching, thanks to you subscribing, this little line has been compounding since we started in May 2017, so the years go by. And I'll try to do my best, improve the quality of the videos, give more value, as I hope I'll do today. If you just want to see what I'm donating, local projects, education, trying to transform the education and we are doing Nepali projects helping schools with their toilet systems and we have saved lives because the disease number has declined. So thank you all. If you want to donate I'll put two PayPal in the description of the video below. Thank you very very much. This is all possible just thanks to you. Merry Christmas and I'm very very grateful. All you can do like, subscribe and share. Let's start with the stock analysis and I really hope I'll give as much value as I can because we'll go into the details of these stocks. What are the real contributors to creating shareholder value? The first stock I want to discuss is Unilever. It's the Anglo-Dutch food, beauty, healthcare conglomerate and uh, I'm sure you use many of these products and if I would use probably this product then I would have a larger YouTube woman population as they say. But apart from the jokes let's dig into the company, the stock of course very famous brands here so I think you are probably also using something that they make. If we look at the long-term stock chart the stock is a clear compounder because since 1981 it was one dollar now it's 58 plus the dividends so really constantly has been compounding over time. Over the last five years things haven't been that great. Here Buffett made an offer to buy them, the stock jumped, they did a lot of buybacks were against Buffett buying them, we'll come on that a bit later, but really the market exploded over the last years, they didn't, they are flat. And that's also something to put into the intrinsic value calculation. So this is the table, you can download it, you can play here with the stocks that we discuss and you can change the input inputs to see what and why and how you come to an intrinsic valuation depending on your discount rate, depending on what is your expected return and then you see okay what's the intrinsic value. Let's see why for Unilever I used only the dividend and then 
a terminal value and nothing more. First, if you look at Unilever, it's a slow growing company. So if we would listen to Peter Lynch, he says, avoid until it becomes or a turnaround or an asset play. But still, okay, let's look at Unilever. When it comes to the company, sales growth has been really, really sluggish over time. We have also, depending on what they are, looking at as a company presenting we have declining sales growth speed but actually revenues turnover didn't grow there is a currency impact there as the euro strengthened but they have sold their spread business so food revenues are going down home care are equal and beauty and other care is going strongly up as they made an acquisition and they are forcing acquisitions there europe is declining in sales, the Americas, let's say, stable, but they are selling and growing in emerging markets. That is their focus for growth. Plus, they are doing acquisitions, many acquisitions, but also disposing of the lower margin business so that they can increase their margins and make their financials look much better. However, if we look at the acquisitions, given that there has been no revenue growth over time, this is not something really value adding because there is a billion, approximately a billion per year over the last 10 years that they have spent more on acquisitions than they have received from disposals. This means that their acquisition strategy is not really for growth, like we'll see in the case later for Kroger, where acquisitions really drive growth. So their acquisitions, the 1 billion extra that they spend is something that comes out of their cash flow, free cash flow. And it's not really free cash flow, it's just maintenance cash flow. And that's something you have to see when you're calculating the inputs per stock. Capital expenditures, so what you are investing in developing the business, they decided to really lower them from 2 billion, bring it down to leave more cash flows, to pay the dividend. So when a company says, okay, we are not going to invest as we did earlier, it's also a sign of stagnating things. Plus something that again, factors in on the cash flows if you look at the debt level the net funds the net funds were about what 6 billion euros 10 years ago and now we are down to minus 24 billion so that's a huge increase of debt for a company that has not seen revenue growth because okay what are you then taking that debt for cash flows okay cash flows they say have grown from 3 billion to the current 6 billion. But if I deduct the 1 billion that they are investing in acquisitions for growth that is not growth, then this also doesn't look that good. And then of course we have the dividend constantly increasing, increasing, increasing. And now they need 4 billion euros per year just to cover the dividend. This is Morningstar. Uh, this is a very nice chart that Morningstar offers. Let me just show you how to get to it. You go to Morningstar, we'll later discuss Tesla. You type in the ticker, you get this open. If, you, if I would have a faster internet line would be great. Key ratios, full key ratios data. And then you get all this data here and it should be for free. So let's get back to the presentation. Revenues stagnating 51 billion euros, 51 billion euros over eight years. We have operating margins okay, increasing a little bit as they are selling the bad businesses as acquiring good businesses, better businesses. Earnings per share has grown about 50% over the last 10 years. Not stellar, but it did grow. Dividends doubled, but also the payout, rate, payout ratio increased from 60 to 70%. The shares went down approximately 10%, but mostly here when they did everything they could to dissuade Buffett or others from buying. So they went on a spending spree. Operating cash flows almost doubled, but their cap spending decreased and their free cash flows, they say it's 7 billion, but I 
must say I do not agree and you'll see now why. As I said, we have cash dividends that they are paying everything they can, 4 billion for cash. They are increasing their debt. So, okay, free cash flows, but why then did you increase your debt by 20 billion? 20 billion over 10 years, it's 2 billion a year. They didn't lower the number of shares outstanding significantly. And we have seen that acquisitions and disposal are on the acquisition side. So these 7 billion, where I take in the debt accumulated and that come to 4 billion, which tells me, okay, these guys have only enough to pay the dividend. And therefore, the dividend is what has to be used when making an intrinsic calculation. Plus, smart asses. In August, June this year, they said, we are going to boycott online media. We're going to boycott. We are pure heart, of course, and now they see their de revenues declining because it's all about social media these days, and now they return silently or what boycott, who boycott, no what. So it's terrible management in my view. Plus, now they have fortunately a new CEO, but uh, I remember in 2017 when Buffett wanted to buy them, and the CEO went around saying how the performance of Unilever because the stock jumped when Buffett made his offer, was better than Berkshire, blah, 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 and we don't need, let Buffett do what we know. And my feeling is the only reason why they left 143 billion, didn't accept it, because all the management, when Sergio Lehman, 3G would come in, would be fired, because the management with Unilever, such a big company, it's more about just keeping the, their jobs and keeping things stable. The worst case scenario for them, as they said for Financial Times, was a takeover bid. Ooh, God forbid we give value to shareholders. If shareholders would have gotten the money, market capitalization, 143, exactly what Warren Buffett was offering. That was in British pound. So we are there. Three years have passed. The market is up 50%. Unilever shareholders are up squat. That's life. So let's look at our Unilever table. The dividend yield is 1.65. I have assumed in the normal case scenario, a 2% growth rate over the dividend over the next five years. 2% over the subsequent five years. Discount rate, so the discount rate, what is your expected return? If it's 5%, you put 5%. If it's 10%, you put 10%. And then you use these value, values to compare. Now, the terminal multiple, how do you determine one? The more conservative you are, the lower you put the terminal multiple. Because we don't know what will the world look like in 2030. We don't know what will be valuations. We don't know anything. But the more conservative we are, depending on how well we know the business, what are our certainties in the business, that's how we derive a growth rate. That's how we derive what actually might be our assumptions for the future. So earnings, cash flows, dividends, what is the real value creation of the business that I, in this case, decided it's just the dividend, they don't create more value for shareholders, and then you go for the terminal rate. So let's say that it stays equal to the market in the normal case scenario, terminal rate 20, the stock value is 56, which is much, much lower than the current value. If I put a 5% discount rate, we go a little bit higher, 4% discount rate. We are close to the current stock price, which means that investors investing in Unilever could expect 4%, which is close to the dividend, and that's it. In the best case scenario, if they can manage to invent growth of 5% something, we put a higher discount rate, let's say, 7%, then we can expect if the company grows 5% plus the dividend, if they grow the dividend 5%, then plus a better multiple rate can be also lower depending on what the market thinks, but it has a big impact here. The lower you go here, the more conservative you are. Worst case scenario, let's say the dividend has to decline, there are dividend cuts, 
terminal multiple is lower, intrinsic value is really, really bad. I have put a 30% chance for this scenario, 1% chance for the best case. I really don't like Unilever. So this is my estimations. And you, had, you can play around here and see whether this fits you. If you like Unilever, okay. If you don't, there are better companies and we are going to talk about them just now. And then also something I wanted to show you. So these are my estimations and you can see estimations can be all over the place. Let's look at analysts estimation for Unilever. For 2020, they estimate from earnings decline of 6.4% to earnings growth of 1%. 2021, this is analyst consensus. The worst is minus 1% earnings. The best is 7% earnings. Of course, one year, it's okay. But look at, the, think of the discrepancies here over a very long time. If I put dividend growth 10, 10%, discount rate is the same, and terminal multiple 25, I get to double the intrinsic value. And if you look at analysts what they are saying we are there this is investing so you have to be flexible with all these inputs but then it's about comparing the quality qualitative sides of the business with everything else the next stock in line with unilever we have nestle another amazing compounder over the years plus this is swiss francs the stock is traded in New York OTC, in Europe and also in Switzerland. So Swiss francs have strengthened in relation to other currencies. So this performance is even better over the years. Let's see what to put into our template for Nestlé. With the company, I don't think, I think I don't have to introduce you to the brands or anything. It's a company we all know. We all drink. I love my Nespresso's, etc. So what else? But I've looked at the cash flow statement. There is a lot going on, but just to simplify quickly, Morningstar here is pretty, pretty right. So we have cash flows, free cash flows of around 11 billion Swiss francs per year. The revenues are declining, but that's again in Swiss francs. So global revenues as the Frank is strengthening, they have seen declining revenues. They are slowly growing, but given the free cash flows that they use to do buybacks and dividends, and if we look at the number of shares, also not that big, we'll see later again with Kroger how good it can get. Dividends have grown, so they pay out the free cash flows into the dividend. This is the Swiss franc that I showed you as the franc is strengthening against the dollar the revenues are declining so i've looked at the company in this case i've said okay nestle what is the value created so they are delivering those dividends from the free cash flows so i think that the value created is the 11 billion in this case you can divide it by the number of shares but let's take the billions 11 billion I assume 2% growth, organic normal growth over the years in Swiss francs, that would be great. Discount rate 6% in this case, because that gives me an intrinsic value close to the market. So I know, okay, Nestle, I can expect a return of around 6%. If we look at the market capitalization, 291 billion, which is in line with this intrinsic value of ours, 5.5 perhaps, and then we get close to the value there. 11 billion on almost 300, that's the dividend yield of around 3%, free something. So depending on what you expect from the company with 2% of growth, you get to the 5, 5% growth, 5% long-term return, which is almost double what Unilever has, stronger brands, better quality, I think with Nestlé. So from an investing perspective, I would rather invest in Nestlé rather than Unilever. Plus I hate the management with Unilever. Personal affairs, Dutch, Dutch thing, but okay, let's leave that aside. Okay, next stock, another compounder 
but much more volatile as we have seen a big jump here, then a crazy decline, then up and down, up and down. It's Kroger company, a very, very interesting company. And I made a video about it. One of my first videos, I'll put the link if you want to have a laugh, I'll put the link in the description below. When this dropped in 2017 after earnings, I put a link how the market is totally irrational and how Kroger will beat the market because this drop, according to me back then, was irrational. A few months later, the stock was already 50 percent up it went up and down up and down and now is 50 percent up i think we have beaten the market since i did this but let's look at the fundamentals what the company is doing and what to put into our template if we look at the financials unlike the other two companies this is a growth company slow growth style world, let's say but from 80 billion dollars to 130 billion dollars that's already something operating margins volatile and that's why also you see the volatility but positive earnings per share steady growth there so they are doing something good the dividend has in tripled over time with an equal payout ratio that's very very important so they are not overspending on the dividend but what they did comparatively they lowered the number of shares by 40 percent over 10 years that's staggering that's something really amazing and they are still spending now just to prove the new spending for buybacks of a billion operating cash flows if we look here we look at the investments they make some acquisitions and then they scale their business and this is also thanks to acquisitions but free cash flows in a good year this is a little bit COVID more spending now okay but if I look at the free cash flows I agree with what the company says and we are at 1.5 billion conservatively on average they have increased their debt from about 7 billion to 11 billion as they make these acquisitions they acquire smaller companies they integrate them into their huge system so they play on the efficiencies of scale which is something that works and by acquiring smaller markets i think it can still continue to grow so i think the company can still continue on a slow and steady growth path taking that making acquisitions increase profitability on efficiencies of scale also on branding i have looked also here and the cash flow but it's in line with this this is a little bit more of payables and everything but 1.5 billion and if we take it into our template kroger 1.5 billion cash flows let's say they grow at two percent let's say three percent they grow over the next 10 years discount rate 10 percent then the intrinsic value is 21 billion if we look at the market cap 23 billion so the intrinsic value offers us close to a 10 percent return if they keep growing at three percent which makes kroger the cheapest stock in this environment in the best case scenario okay three percent putting this back to two percent but still the change isn't there because the cash flows are already significant seven percent six seven percent plus two percent growth then if we put a higher multiple that's also expected if you look at the quality of the business in the future if we put a higher multiple then we are even higher this is market average so you can expect a 10 percent discount 10 percent return from kroger and this is a company i might think of following over time and also really making a deep analysis so that I know follow over time. Uh, I just started following Cisco, so Christmas gift, you can check my Cisco report in the link in the description below. On a positive rate, 3% growth, more higher terminal multiple in a positive environment, then the present value is even higher in billions we are talking here. So bad scenario, declining, low multiple then we can lose 50 percent that's the risk of investing i would put 
unlikely this scenario, just 10%. But Kroger, let's say, is now fairly valued for a 10% long-term investing return. So what I said in 2017 might still be true, even if this higher prices. And now before we discuss the intrinsic value of Tesla, the robot taxis, the whatever, let me go back to Peter Lynch. If you read his book, technology companies are always very risky and we'll discuss that in the valuation of Tesla. But who benefits most from technology companies are companies that use the technology later. So Kroger could be a technology user, robot taxi, delivering my groceries, my everything, so that I don't have to go there, etc. So they have the infrastructure, they have everything. They might really benefit, thanks to their scale, to whatever might be the future there. So yes, it's a boring supermarket company, but you never know what will happen in the future. So we might even in increase that growth rates in the best case scenario. But that's just again about the future and investing is about assumptions and let's see the assumptions with Tesla. So we look at Tesla, huge revenue growth. I know that Elon Ma Ma Musk says Tesla or something like that because he's from South Africa and I say Tesla and if there is a, anything that I say right about the stock then, is the, then it is the pronunciation. Nikola Tesla was born in Croatia, I grew up there so we are point on that. It's Tesla. All right, let's continue with the analysis. So we have revenue, amazing revenue growth, staggering operating cash flows finally turned positive. And I'm looking here, okay, they say free cash flow, 2 billion on 28 billion in revenue. If they can keep these margins, they also say they will improve the margins. Okay, that's what I can take into the calculation and see how this will work. They have for now, what is this, free? I think I know that Tesla fanboys have much better knowledge, but let's just do this in, as an exercise. So they can seven new ones plus more in construction. They can easily triple, quadruple, quintuple, tentuple their production in the next years, especially as you can get five billion just like that with minimal dilution. And they say also that they will increase their profit margins. I'm looking here at the staggering growth, 5x growth over three years. So we have earnings, we have cash flow that have turned positive. So what am I going to use here with Tesla? I'm going to use, okay, let's say 2 billion in cash flows, but Tesla is a growth stock. As we have seen, they want to invest more in growth, more in factories. So every available dime that they have will be invested in growth, not returned to shareholders. So if they grow 40% per year over the next 10 years, yes, then the only thing we can calculate here as a valuation for Tesla because we don't expect dividends before they go to Mars. Sorry for the joke, I cannot refrain myself. Uh, we don't expect dividends, so this valuation here should be deleted. So because we, that's not for rewarding shareholders yet. So if we look at Tesla and they continue to grow at 40% per year, so everything is focused on growth, then at a 10% discount rate, so if you expect a 10% return, we are at an intrinsic value of 477 billion. So if we put a 7% normal with a terminal multiple of 30, we can put 40. If you a company growing at 40% still then deserves even higher, 60. Then we are at 1.2 trillion compared to the current 600 billion market cap that's still a double over the next 10 years. Of course, best case scenario, they might grow even faster. So we can put here, I don't know, 80, and that's then again a quintuple possible if Elon manages to do this. Then when you look at these estimations, it's always good to look at the market. So if they grow 40% 
over the next 10 years, then their sales go for four, from 400,000 cars to 11 million cars in 10 years. So not 20 years, in 10 years. And okay, that's possible. 80 million cars sold per year on average globally, they would have then 15%. They are not only doing cars, they will do trucks, they will do this, they will do that, they will do left and right. So will Elon Musk do it? That depends on Elon Musk. So we have seen also the risks, uh, just tweeted how Apple didn't want to buy them when they were close to bankruptcy a few years ago. So that was just a few years ago. And from bankruptcy to high stock price, to high capital, to profits, is what partly explains the stock price explosion here. So if they keep growing like this, if we go back to our template, worst case scenario is always good to keep in mind. Let's say that the growth rate falls to, I don't know, 20 and then just 10% and you expect a discount rate of 10, the multiple goes down to 25, then we are at, uh, and we delete the present values because we are not seeing dividends, then the present value is 70. That's a 90% possible decline. That's also possible if the growth rates, what's baked into the price here, that isn't, which this should be the price, if that isn't reached. So we covered a lot of work here. I hope you received value from this. Please don't forget to like, subscribe and share because by doing this, you are doing also for something for the better good. Check all the links in the description below my book if you want something to read over the holidays, whatever, what I do, my research, and I'll see you in the next video.